Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Celeste and today I'm super excited to be beginning a new series for my YouTube channel on Girl Sleuths. I'm a huge fan of Girl Sleuths. I used to collect them as a child, still do into adulthood. And what better place to start than with Nancy Drew. You can probably recognize those golden spines behind me in the bookcase. And in future videos, I will be doing bookshelf tours, tips on collecting various editions from different decades and so on. But for today, I really just wanted to concentrate on two basic things for newbies. Number one, who is Nancy Drew? And secondly, where's the best place to start reading Nancy Drew? <clears throat> Excuse me. So who is Nancy Drew? Nancy Drew is a sleuth. She's a teenager. She lives in the town of River Heights with her father, Carson Drew, who is an attorney. She also lives with a housekeeper uh, who sort of becomes a second mother figure to her. Her name is Hannah Gruen. Nancy's own mother actually passed away when she was younger. So the three of them live in River Heights in a house. Depending on which edition of Nancy Drew you choose to read, Nancy's either 16 years old or 18 years old. She drives, she's a graduate of high school, and she's a very accomplished young teenager. She's athletic and uh, well-read, and she has a nose for sleuthing. Nancy Drew first appeared in Mystery Number no. 1, the Secret of the Old Clock, and this was in 1930. This is a original vintage edition of Nancy Drew from 1930. Please do be aware that if you're picking up these vintage copies that the text and storyline was rewritten, I believe it was in 1959. So the actual story, some of the characters, and um, some of the writing uh, was replaced in these later editions, they're called matte yellow spined editions by Grosset and Dunlap. So just be aware of that. These are the ones that I actually collect, but I happened to find this on a free shelf at the library. So of course I had to pick it up, I couldn't resist. Nancy Drew starts sleuthing in The Secret of the Old Clock. And for my money, it's really the best place to start with Nancy Drew. Why not start at the very beginning? Some people feel that the tone of The Secret of the Old Clock is actually a little bit different than the later mysteries and to start with the second one, The Hidden Staircase. But I feel that the origin story for Nancy is important. It establishes who she is, where she lives. Uh, it also includes her friend Helen Corning who only appears in a few of the Nancy Drew books so if you're looking to uh, catch a glimpse of Helen Corning I would begin with number one. In the secret of the old clock Nancy is driving in the countryside one day a little girl runs into the road and is in danger of being hit by an oncoming vehicle. Nancy rescues the girl and brings her back to her two aunts, the Turners, and learns from conversation uh, that the Turners are impoverished and that money that would have come to them and was eventually to go to Judy um, is no longer theirs because they were somehow supposed to receive it through an inheritance from their cousin Josiah Crowley, but um, it ended up going suddenly to other relatives, the snobby and wealthy Topham family. So Nancy decides to do a little bit of sleuthing and meet some of the other relatives and cousins as she tries to figure out what happened to Josiah Crowley's will. And into the picture comes an old clock that Josiah apparently left a clue in or was the will in the clock? Was there a clue in the clock? Where's the clock? What does the clock look like? And um, she ends up sleuthing with her friend Helen Corning and danger ensues. So it really is a great place to start and um, has a special place for me.
Well, after you've finished The Secret of the Old Clock, where do you go from there? You could just pick up any of the Nancy Drews, and that's fine. Um, some of them do have some of her cousins in them. Some uh, introduce a beau of hers, Ned Nickerson, who's a student in college, um, and some other characters as well. But for my money, the next best place to go is mystery number two, The Hidden Staircase. This cover is so iconic. Um, I think it's um, ingrained in every little girl's memory that ever read Nancy Drew. And this one is, um, let's see, I think Helen Corning is also in this one. They pack their bags and go to a place called Twin Elms, which is a historic colonial mansion. And the mansion is so cool. It uh, has all kinds of passageways and rooms and paneled libraries and all kinds of, you know, outer buildings. And in some of the scenes, Carolyn Keene describes the roof. Uh, there's a roof scene in here. And um, it's just one of the most iconic mansions in children's literature in my opinion. So Nancy and Helen go off to Twin Elms to help some relatives uh, figure out why the place seems haunted. There seems to be a ghost there that moves things. In the middle of the night, they'll hear creaky footsteps. Music will start playing from a room that nobody was in. So it's just really cool. And uh, with Helen, Nancy helps to solve the hidden staircase. So this is where I would definitely go next. It's one of the best in the series and it's the second one in, so you don't have to read too far to get to it. Now, the next choice is a little bit trickier. If you're reading chronologically, you're probably going to want to go to mystery number three, the bungalow mystery. However, it's not my personal favorite, I've also read from other vloggers and uh, book bloggers that it's not their favorite either. I don't want that to necessarily influence you. I love going in chronological order. So, if, you know, I've read number one, then number two, then number three, then number four, just going numerically because uh, I don't want to miss any of them and I want to see how story arcs develop. However, it's really not plotted as well as some of the others. It moves kind of slowly. And at the end of it, I wasn't, to be honest, really feeling it. Um, it was okay. I would give it like if we were talking uh, one out of, you know, one to five stars, I would say maybe a three, a two and a half to a three. So it's okay. Um, and it does involve a bungalow. Um, however, and there's some exciting scenes in a storm on a boat on a lake, so that's kind of fun as well. It's not a bad Nancy Drew story. It's just, you know, if you were going to move on, this might be the place to do it. And so if you were going to do that, sorry, I'm dropping my books here, you would go to number four, The Mystery at Lilac Inn. Helen and Nancy are visiting Lilac Inn, which is a sort of rundown historic mansion that's currently being restored. And they go to visit a friend, I believe of Helen's, um, named Emily Willoughby, who is engaged to be married. Similar to The Hidden Staircase, uh, there's mysterious goings on at Lilac Inn, and the same attention to detail is paid to hallways, corridors, hidden passageways, wallpaper, creaky noises, strange happenings. As well, there's a, a phantom that's appearing um, outside in a meadow. And so Nancy is trying to help solve that. It also has one of the coolest girl sleuth uh, subplots going in it. Apparently, Nancy is also a skilled scuba diver and has scuba suits, not only one, she has a spare scuba suit. So she's seriously into scuba diving. And it's so cool because there is a river that goes through, 
would you believe it, River Heights, and um, Nancy goes scuba diving in the river. And all kinds of things happen underwater in this book too. I remember when I was a little girl, I just thought that was amazing. And um, at the time we lived on Westfall Road and running through our backyard was a creek. And I always wanted to either go scuba diving in the creek, even though it was actually only like two feet deep. Um, but I always wanted to go scuba diving there or ride a boat down the creek. So, um, and Nancy Drew definitely fueled my desire to do that. So, um, this is a must read. The mystery is actually pretty cool. This is one of those ones that was substantially rewritten from the original edition um, because I believe there were some stereotyped images and um, ways of referring to people that were inappropriate and so uh, they did do an overhaul of the series and try to correct that so um, but yeah overall and there's a if you look at the cover there you're seeing the spectral image that appears in the meadow so that's the mystery at lilac Inn by carolyn king finally we come to the Secret of Shadow Ranch. This is a good one. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's um, pretty good. And in this one, they go down to the Southwest. They're trying to, again, find a fortune uh, that was hidden somewhere by an outlaw named Dirk Valentine. And so um, Nancy joins her cousins, Bess Marvin and George Fain, who appear in a number of the Nancy Drew books. So Helen Corning is not in this one, but we do get introduced to Bess and George. George is a female. And um, they try to solve the mystery. There is a little bit of repetition in that there is a specter in the meadow. This time it is a stallion, which is a ghostly glowing white. Um, but there's treasure and there's all kinds of other things that happen in this. So this is a fun one to read and I think it's a good logical place to go next. So yeah, I would definitely do The Secret of the Old Clock, number one. Number two, The Hidden Staircase. The Bungalow Mystery, which is number three, you could skip if you wanted to go ahead to the next one. Uh, which is Lilac Inn, and then finally um, The Secret of Shadow Ranch. Those are the first five books in the series. We'll definitely be back talking about other titles and um, you know where to go from there. Um, I'll also try to do a top 10 favorites. I'll do a shelf tour at some point. So we'll get much more involved in the whole Nancy Drew thing in terms of um, girl sleuths. Um, we'll be looking at other girl sleuths as well, but um, I'm just referring to the Nancy Drew ones right now. I hope you've enjoyed this and that it's been useful. Do you read Nancy Drew? Did you collect it as a child? Um, the series, I've stuck with the 56 original titles. I don't really um, read the newer Nancy Drew mysteries. I don't mean to sound snobbish, but um, to me, they just don't have the same impact uh, for me as the original 56 stories. But um, if you love those two, um, that's fantastic. You do you. And um, I'm so happy you joined me today. I would love to hear from you in the comments below about your own Nancy Drew experiences. Which one is your favorite? Would you read them chronologically or did you skip around when you read them as a child? Let me know. Thanks for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.